I started my uh, my first instrumental was a uh, violin when I was uh, five years old. I started this uh, Suzuki method, which is coincidentally the uh, same name as my <laughs> family name, but I'm not related at all. But uh, I saw this documentary on TV, you know, all kids playing violin. And, uh, I really wanted to start uh, some uh, music, especially this violin, very attracted to me, attractive to me. And, uh, so that's my first instrumental. Then I switched to guitar when I was uh, age 10 years old. And uh, uh, this, in 1970s, this Japanese pop band plays acoustic guitar and singing, uh, folky style. So that's uh, my first hero. Then um, uh, I have a three years older brother, and he started listening Western music. Uh, this American group called uh, Grand Funk Railroad. Which mm. is a, it's, yes, seventies American pop rock band, and uh, also uh, from Britain, been listening. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, Cream, Stones, Led Zeppelin, those, you know, giants in the right 60s, rock. yeah, 70s, that's all my uh, uh, guitar play, it, it, yeah, influenced a lot from those people. So that's all my history. And, and, how, and how did you first learn to play? Did you go and take lessons or did you...? I've never really learned from uh, anyone, just uh, listen to records just from me. Yeah, and then copy the lick and that. Uh, and did you find that it came very naturally to you when you were 10 years old? Oh yeah, I was believing that's the only uh, way to, uh, you know, learning uh, instrumental. So that's why I spent a lot of time to listen to yeah. music and then to play. And, and at that stage, you know, did you did you learn, you know, how to read or anything like that, or you, was it all by ear? Yeah, all by ear. And I and knew a little bit about uh, how to write, but, but I never really used. And do you remember, you know, around that time, like how often you practice? Did you practice like oh, yeah. lots of hours every day or? Oh yeah, yeah. And always I was with guitar and uh, playing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, and so was that kind of from when you were 10, you were, you were hooked? Exactly, like, yeah. Did yeah. you ever have any time like between 10 and now where you, where you sort of thought, oh, you know, guitar, I can't really... I think I have to say, I must say, uh, my passion to uh, guitar and music was when I was young, I was like a mo maybe more, because I was more like kind of uh, afraid about uh, my future. I might have enough skill, you know, to uh, perform on the stage. So that's why I really needed to practice more, 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 kind of. Yeah. But now, uh, you know, I've been through big stage a lot, so uh, I don't really need to, uh, you know, practice too much. And uh, I know. You're confident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and, uh, I don't really need to scare anymore, you know. Yeah. yeah. And so you were, so you were playing in Japan in the seventies. No, I was born in 1964, so yeah. 70s was my childhood. Yes, was your childhood, you know. growing up, yeah. I was just but, uh, thinking that. I was kind then, of a, quite then, a pro prodigy in Japan. Japanese young guitar yeah. a newcomer came, that's a me, in uh, mid early 80s. So I did, I supported the Deep Purple, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Actually, I met Stevie Ray Vaughan when I was wow. young. And, uh, what you, so, and what, when you when you were playing with these guys, was this because you were kind of like known yeah, as like I a, was, uh, a very I, good guitarist? I had my own uh, record deal with Epic Sony in Japan when I was young, like a teen, teenager. Wow. And uh, I was making a few uh, instrumental records from a, a Sony record company. And so you supported these guys in the early yeah, 80s? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, great chance to see Stevie Ray Vaughan on stage just behind his guitar, which is an amazing experience. That's incredible. Yeah. And how did it come about that you, that you were signed up to a record deal like that? Did you, you know, did things spread through word of mouth? Were you playing a lot of gigs or...? 
Um, how, how did the record label come to hear about how good you know how good a guitar you were and you know hear about yeah, the yeah I met with, like the right people I tried yeah, to right meet people. with the right people so you're doing lots of networking and stuff like that yeah so there, yeah I tried hard when I was young yeah yeah and and when did you st first start playing lots of gigs mm -hmm. how old you know how old were you when you first started playing I was 16 17 I was still a student. And what type of pla you know what type of places would you play? It's a little live venue. It's like a you know like a little small club over here, kind of similar vibe. Yeah. And would you would you play in instrumental bands because you you know you believe? I played uh, quite a funny way because I didn't hire any band, so, and uh, I made a, a little karaoke backing track because that era early eighties. Uh, this uh, Japanese company called TIAC. First time they made this uh, multi-track cassette tape uh, recorder, which is uh, lots of people use as a home recording. And so I just made my uh, little band on this uh, little, you know, four-track recorder. And I played awesome. on a stage and I played the guitar on that. And you played yeah, play along with that. Yeah. And did you did you immediately when you first started playing live? Did you always get good reactions from all these? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Very uh, uh, popular, famous um, Japanese singer started to point to me, and he uh, uh, um, supported a lot. Yeah. He, he used me as an opening act for big show. And, uh, Oh. My, when, yeah, when I was 17, 18. And at this stage, yeah. were you, what, what were your sort of ambitions? Were you able to make it big as a, as a solo act or did you, did you want to play Somehow, guitar in a big band? Or? No, my ambition every, all the time, even still, now is like, like just I want to live in with the music. So that's yeah. my... Uh, Biggest it's, it's a difficult thing to do. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, a, it's nothing really making a big money from music at all. N not that kind of a direction. So uh, just uh, wants to do some. Uh, you wanted to be able to develop your yeah, life to music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is the, the music I want to make. You know. Yeah, of course. So. Um, and so you moved to so you moved to the UK in 1988. If That's right. Yeah, I had a great chance to uh, move to England because I played with um, uh, this guy called Jack Bruce, who used to be a singer and a bass player on, with a, a band called Cream, obviously yeah. <laughs> Giants. So, yeah. And uh, so his first uh, visiting Japan was the project with me and uh, I met him in New York and uh, I, we were uh, involved in this same project called Golden Palominos which is a uh, New York underground uh, type of group and Jack was singing as a guest of singer and I was there as a guest guitarist then uh, we, uh, that's the first time I met with him and uh, we started talking about, uh, you know, we should do some gig in Tokyo. Then it happened in 1987, then gig went really nice, good, and he invited me to uh, move to England because he was expecting this uh, Russian tour, just before all, um, you know, Russia uh, Still, um, yeah, independent. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and, uh, but uh, in Russia, Jack had a big follower. He always, I think, he touring in the uh, Eastern Bloc of Europe with uh, in the uh, maybe eighties with uh, John McLaughlin and Billy Cobham on drums and more like a jazz as a jazz. More jazz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he was uh, expecting another tour with, uh, um, I don't know what sort of music, but uh, he was asking me to uh, come to uh, this uh, Russian tour. I'd love to, you know? Yeah. So 
So that's the first time. And so, 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 so that was what made you leave Japan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And was that was that difficult to do? Cause, you know, I know that you're, you know, to this day very, you know, well, fond of fond of Japan and you're fond of your country. Yeah, but uh, I had a uh, good support from record company, so I didn't really uh, not necessary to uh, working in, as a uh, washing dishes in a Japanese restaurant. Or, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I could enough to yeah I, I, um, survive. Yeah. Support. So um, um, I uh, but I. Uh, when I met Jack again in London, he had already he decided that another guitarist already. So basically, I couldn't really go to a tour with him. So basically, I was, oh, shall I go back to Japan or you know, shall I just stay here to have a look a little bit more on different scene? What's going on in England? Which is the ninety late eighties, that era. This music scene in this country was a totally uh, no guitar music scene. Yeah, yeah. Say like Very glossy. D, yeah, DJ culture just started all like a house music and hip hop. And, um, so things are moving away from the music that, that really. No, I just Literally started thinking, lot. how can I merge with the, you know my uh, talent? Can merge with this. Uh, Project. Then uh, this I met this guy called Tim Simeno. He, he he's uh, known as a bomb the bass. And his yeah. first uh, tune into the dragon, uh, or entire the dragon. But I, anyway, he's a, he had a top ten hit record as an independent uh, uh, player. I mean uh, artist, indie play artist, and. Uh, so uh, coincidentally, I met with him and uh, I started to hang around in his studio. And uh, so what we did is I just jamming with his drum loops and recorded. And uh, when we some you know groovy points, uh, we just marked and the sampling that point. So that's how uh, guitar sampling, dance music yeah, started. Yeah in the late 80s and uh, so uh, we made a record but a uh, Gulf War started so we couldn't really use this name called the Bomb the Bass because BAM is uh, you know, quite uh, um, a yeah, so yeah. yeah so same era I think Massive Attack couldn't name their name they had to call themselves just Massive or something uh, so, <laughs> So, and, uh, so we spent a lot of time to make a record, but uh, we couldn't really promote it um, too well. But I think we had uh, three hits, and uh, I had experience to be pa appeared on uh, uh, Top of the Pops, which oh, right, was right. amazing. Uh, That's awesome. Amazing, yeah, yeah, in a part of British music history. So uh, I was lucky. That's incredible. Mm. And so was so was that that was sort of like what you describe as like your breakthrough moment in the UK. Well, yeah, I had to change <coughs> because I was more like into like I wanted to be like Jeff Beck or Eric Clapton or you know rock and roll, you know what I mean? Like, but you had to adapt to the times. It, but exactly, so which is my kind of my fantasy of you know British classic rock. I think a lot of uh, people who live living outside of uh, Britain thinks still like those Beatles and the Stones. Yeah, they think uh, when they move to London it's going to be the swinging sixties. Exactly, yeah, it's exactly. not the swinging sixties. Exactly, yeah. But like you, that young generation really respect those music oh, era and stuff. So which is like really makes us like happy and uh, you know smile. Yeah. But when I came to England 30 years ago, which is quite disappointed because all of the you know, young kids... You dreamed of this land. Yeah, yeah. They, not, they don't even know about who is the Beatles or who is the Stones. So. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. probably at that stage as well. Yeah, they just the didn't care. Was, uh, quite terrible. But, um, and then from there, was that, was that when you played on the Seal record after that? Crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's... A, um, <coughs> that's sim era. similar type of style, you know. Obviously, yeah. he's done lots of different yeah. types of music, but uh, that record, Seal's first solo album, was um, uh, 
I think lots of different producers divided worked as a divided to different project. So who was the producer on? And then um, I was involved in as a bo part of Bomb the Bass. Tim Simenon was uh, started as a uh, like some produce. And uh, so when we done some sort of a uh, production, we just uh, send uh, everything into uh, Trevor Hall. Oh uh, yeah. In the end, Trevor Hall just uh, you know mixed and he mixed it his own way. Then uh, yeah, he's a very particular. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and he did like owner of a lonely heart, like the yes oh, yeah. board and stuff like that. A yeah. very good producer, Trevor. Exactly, yeah, and like he, so he was the seal. Yeah, and and so that single that you played on, and you played yeah. that like, yeah. iconic guitar that's, part on that. Yeah, that uh, wow wow part is on my guitar. So uh, yeah. that's were well, you very proud because you must have heard that on the radio and stuff like all the time. You know, it's a oh, yes. record. Yeah, fantastic feeling. Yeah, and so from there, did that open a lot of doors for you to play with? Some, some well, people. but to be honest, I wasn't, I didn't really, I don't think I'm, like, I did lots of studio session work at all, just only a few things, just not really, I uh, was living as a, a session guitarist at all, but I've obviously played in the, some uh, big record, like Annie Lennox, yeah. Diva album, or I played in uh, uh, Corinne Bay Ray debut album. Wow. But, um, yeah, but not much. So have you tended to, tended over your career to, to be more focused on playing live? Yeah, yeah. I've been doing, uh, in Japan, uh, my solo, I, I've been working as uh, Kenji Jama, which is uh, my solo uh, artist name. Yeah. And you've just been touring there this year? Yeah, yeah. Um, what were those shows last like? Last year was my debut, 30 five years anniversary and uh, so uh, I just spent more time in, in Japan and played a lot of gig everywhere in Japan. And you play different stuff to what you do with Simply Red, don't you? Exactly, yeah. Simply Red is obviously every audience wanted to hear that, you know, hits, 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 hits. So uh, I just play as a part of song. So. Um, but uh, as a Kenji Jama, when I go back to Japan, I just play what I want to play and I just uh, more uh, noodling. And there's, there's, yeah, there's more of a chance to solo and show exactly. off and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah. like when you see, you know, when you yeah. see you playing Simply Red, obviously you think, oh, obviously you're a good voice, guitarist. The song is, a, you know, the Simply Red. And the book. So it's a song. Yeah. And, and there's but not that much chance for you to solo. But exactly. When you I get mean, going. So, so chill, definitely I have to go to you know, minus two yeah, yeah, dimension yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, when I play in Japan as a Kenji German, I just play uh, 120%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because, yeah. because like a lot of people who obviously you know might might admire you playing with Simply Red probably don't know the extent because when you're talking about how you wanted to be like Jeff Beck or or, or kind of a, a guitarist like that, like you you definitely could be you know like. A, a guitarist around which your group was based on, mm. so I definitely would encourage people watching this interview to to check out oh, your work as Kenji Jammer. Um, but before we wrap up the interview, what I want to ask you is, what 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 are the songs that you've been involved um, with recording, um, and the songs that you've recorded under the name Kenji Jammer and and Kenji Suzuki? Because you've made some out, you made different albums. What are some of the songs that you've that you've played on for other artists, and some of your solo songs that you're most proud of? Particularly ones that are, uh, you know, maybe that are overlooked. But just in general, what, what work are you most proud of? Um, uh, I think on the Simply Red, I'm credited as Kenji Suzuki. Yeah. And all of my uh, work with Simply Red. Because really, Kenji Suzuki. Yeah, yeah really uh, proud of it. And uh, maybe you can't really hear much, but. I really proud of as a part of um, this sound. Uh, Creating this amazing yeah, this sound. sound. Yeah, yeah, or music. And some of these guitar parts are very important and very exactly. iconic. Yeah. So, but Simply Red is like always like less is more kind of. Mick loves space too because he's big uh, influence from, uh, you know, Miles Davis or 
King Tavi or those space music. Like yeah. not much, not like lots of notes, more like just more space. So which is hard, it, which is hard to do. Yeah, exactly. So all each tiny note has to be perfect to tone and the timing and the you know pitch and everything. So uh, I'm really uh, yeah. You played in some really brilliant records. Just so be and you know the show. The show is incredible. Um, but what about what about solo work that you've done? Um, as Kenji Jama, uh, I started this project early 2000 for 10 years. It's called Hula Hula Dance, and uh, which is uh, my uh, kind of Hawaiian ambient uh, dub music. And I started recording this uh, solo project in the middle of touring uh, my first Simply Red tour. And I didn't really expect it to spend, I uh, had to spend so much time in the hotel room and the dressing room. Yeah. So that era, we could have this mobile studio, uh, you know, uh, environment with this uh, little uh, audio converter and the laptop. So I just carried this setup, every single country, and uh, while I'm waiting for uh, my, uh, you know, rehearsal or okay. short time, I just uh, Kept, kept the recording and then uh, guitar, all you know, chilled up guitar instrument and nice groove stuff. And uh, so I uh, started from 2000 to 2010, and those era it was released as a CD, but uh, now I'm planning to put everything back catalog onto uh, Spotify. So uh, when I arrange the, that, would yeah, be awesome, yeah. So I, uh, let you know. Yeah. Well, Kenji, it was a real honour to talk to you. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, thanks for making the time.